Okay, in this video, we're gonna talk about front axle weights and how to calculate them. Now there's an important concept to understand about front axle weights, and I'm gonna use this four-wheel drive model to demonstrate it. The same concept applies to rear axle, but we're talking about front axle weights here. So we're gonna start off with these two brake pads. I'm going to weigh them, and that's gonna come out to 700 and, call that 730 um, grams. And then we're gonna put the vehicle on the scales, and using bits of wood, otherwise it won't fit. I'm just gonna set that tear to zero pop the model on and then you can see the weight 1636 and 1293 at the rear now I'm going to add the weights um, at the front which simulates a bar and winch and you can see that I've actually increased the front axle weight by more than that 730 grams we've actually got a reduction in weight on the back axle and of course the further forwards I move that weight the more pronounced that effect is. So now we've got an even greater increase um, on the front axle, we've got even more of a decrease on the rear axle. Now to make that clearer, what I'm going to do is just set that to zero. So I'll tear that one and I'll tear that one. So effectively I've reset them to zero here. So now we can see if we add it here, then we're adding 850 grams over here. We've taken 120 off the back and if I add it right at the front, like that, we added a massive 967 and removed 234 from the back, yet it's the same total 730 gram weight. And if I put it in the center, then you can see, depending on where I put it, so if I put it at, at the back there, we've got 595135, put it um, towards the front, and it's pretty much reversed. We've got more of the weight on, on the front axle, and we've still got some weight on the back axle here. And exactly the same happens on the rear axle. So if I put it behind the rear axle center line over here, we can see that we've got 868 there. Remember that only weighs 730 grams, minus 138 on the back. And if we put it all the way over at the back, so minus 263 at the front, plus 993 at the back. And remember that's only 730 grams here, and that's the equi equivalent of table mass um, being pushed down there. So that's the difference place where the weight is placed relative to the front and rear axles makes. So to start with, we're just going to take a Ranger Raptor as an example. It applies to all vehicles, just the Raptor is just an example. And we're going to take two lines, one going through the front axle, one going through the rear axle. Now we divide the vehicle up into three zones. This zone here, ahead of the front axle, any weight we add into this zone increases the load on the front axle by more than the weight and actually reduces the load on the rear axle. In the middle here, this zone adds to both front and rear axle loads, although the further forward you put the weight, the more it goes on the front, the further rearwards, the more it goes on the rear. And any weight behind the rear axle increases the rear axle load by more than the weight and reduces the load on the front. So, Let's take a look at some examples here. Now we'll take that Raptor again and we'll take a ball bar, we'll add a winch, a light bar, underbody protection, and we're going to add some recovery points. Now all of that comes to 150 kilograms, but the question is, as we are adding it ahead of the front axle here, what effect will that actually have on the front axle weight itself? Because it's not gonna be 150 kilograms. So here's how we do the calculations. We start off with the wheelbase, which is the distance between the front axle and the rear axle. In the case of the Ranger Raptor, it's 32 70 millimeters. Then we take a look at the front overhang. So this red line here, that represents the center of gravity of where we're going to add pretty much all of those accessories with one exception. And I've calculated that to be 635 mil. Now we know that if we add, let's say 100 kilos here, that might be 120 here, and it might be the corresponding um, 20 off the back. Now, to find out exactly how much, we can simply divide the overhang by the wheelbase, and that gives us 20%. So that means that 100 kilos here, we add 
20% on that 120 is what's going to be on the front axle. So let's see how that looks in practice. Now, if we take the ball bar first, the ball bar's weight may be 80 kilograms, but because with modern ball bars, you always take something off the car, there's trim to come off, etc. The total weight going on the car is typically less than that. In this case, I'm assuming it's 10 kilograms off and 70 kilograms is going to get added to the car. Now, if we add up 70 kilograms at this point, we add in our front axle factor of 20%, we multiply that by 1.2, our 70 kilogram bull bar actually puts 84 kilograms on the front axle and takes 14 off the rear axle. Then if we go to the winch, the winch is just going to again be in line with this red point here. Um, we're going to add 30 kilograms, not going to take anything off, so that's 30 kilograms um, to the car, 36 on the front axle and 6 off the rear axle. Light bar, similar thing. Um, you, obviously light bar does, doesn't weigh very much but every kilogram starts to add up because front axle limits aren't all that great. Um, recovery points, we're adding another 10 kilograms here. That might be 12 on the rear axle and 2 off the rear but um, overall 10 to the, to the vehicle um, itself. Now finally the underbody protection. Now this one's a little bit different because that yellow mark here indicates where I think it's likely to go. And I think that will balance probably fairly equally on the front axle. So all we're doing there, we're taking that 25 kilograms and just adding it to the front axle and it doesn't have a multiplying effect on the front axle and it doesn't take anything off the rear axle. Obviously, if the underbody protection was mostly thought of the rear axle, that will change, but this is just an example. So you're wondering, okay, where how, you know, where does this actually come out to? What, what's the final figure? And remember, all of these weights here are just approximate to show you the principle. Okay, so with that 20% front axle factor, with the ball bar, the LED bar, um, the recovery points and the winch, we're adding 115 kilograms um, to this point here. And that means that we're adding 138 kilograms to the front axle and taking 23 off the rear axle. Now we're going to add the underbody protection which is 25 kilograms straight down this line here so we're actually adding 163 kilograms in total to the um, front axle. So that's a bit different from the 150 which everything added up to when it was just sitting on the workshop um, ready to be installed. Now what about short wheelbase vehicles? Well that changes a bit because we've got a shorter wheelbase here and you can see that say 115 at the front that translates to now 145 at this point and the factor here is now 26% which is high because that wheelbase is getting shorter. Now you're thinking okay well that's a short wheelbase wrangler what does it look like for long wheelbase? Well I have the answers here as well. So same line going through the front axle same line where the accessories are going to be installed. We're going to add 115 to each of them. Different wheelbases, so obviously shorter wheelbase there. 26% is our front axle factor for the short wheelbase, but only 21% for the front for the long wheelbase. And what that means is that the 115 kilograms here translates to 145 on the front axle, but only 139 for the long wheel base. And then we've got 30 off the rear axle here and 24 off the rear axle there. So short wheel base vehicles are more likely to run out of front axle load than the long wheel base vehicles. Now what about Suzuki Jimneys? Well, very short wheelbase, but also very short front overhang. So it actually comes out to pretty much the same as the long wheelbase, because what's important here is actually the ratio of the wheelbase to the front overhang, not just the wheelbase or not just the overhang. It's that ratio which is important for the relative effect of adding weight at the front of the car onto the front axle load. So I'm going to demonstrate that point about the wheelbases using this Lego model. And the weight I'm going to use to do it is this shackle which weighs 300 grams. So we'll take that off, we'll put the model on and I'm going to again reset the tear weight to zero. So that scales read zero with that. I'm going to add 300 grams onto the front axle here. And as you can see that's 390 added to the front and minus 90 off the rear. So again that's in proportion. Now what we're going to do, we'll take that off and we're going to shorten the wheelbase. That and we'll just set it back to tear again. 
Oops, come on, go back to tear. Okay, and we'll put our 300 gram, sort of 30 gram weight there, and 465 on the front axle, which is more, and a lot more off the rear axle. So again, coming out to 300 grams. So there you go, effective wheelbase proven. Okay, so to summarize then, adding weight ahead of the front axle will always add more weight to the front axle than you actually add to the vehicle. For a long wheelbase vehicle, you can work on 25%. Now it's probably closer to 20, but 25% is a good factor. For a short wheelbase vehicle, probably closer to 30%, depending on, on the ratios. And remember, the same effect is on the rear, including for tow ball mass, and I have another video where I'll explain that. So you add 200 kilograms of tow ball mass, you're actually probably gonna be adding more, well, probably over 300 kilograms onto your rear axle, even though the tow ball mass has only been 200 kilograms. So I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments and thank you for watching.